One of the main things that I took away from that whole camp was that, like, there is no opponent. It's only it's me versus me in there. Because if I choose to go into the ring or if I choose to even go into a training mm-hmm. session and I'm, oh, fuck bullshit, like, I'll just, I'll fuck around, I'll just do a couple and, like, yeah. or give up early, like, that, that comes, that, that's me versus me. I'm beating myself at that point. Right. And then I feel like when I, when I um, fought my opponent, I had won at the, the face-offs. Mm-hmm. I looked at him in his eyes and I could just tell, like, he, he was not ready like he, yeah. right so i mean have you had experiences where you're able to like mentally beat your opponent before you even fight him i think that's why training is so important um you have those little anchors of i've got i pushed through this i pushed mm-hmm. through this because if when you don't and you feel like you beat yourself you're not going to carry that into the fight that's why they say train so hard x amount of rounds so you can carry that with you like you win the fight in training camp basically right and i understand that what you say is like when you're in the ring you're like you're, you're not fighting him you're fighting yourself I believe there are actually like three opponents when you fight. I'll give you an example of this. You have your obvious opponent, the guy staring across from you. That's fine. You have your second opponent, which is yourself. Absolutely. And then you have the clock. People Ooh. forget that. Because at any point during that, if you give up on yourself or your opponent starts winning, you still have to beat the clock. Right. If you don't knock them out, obviously. Right? right. So can you stop the clock or can you see it all the way to the end? Because I've seen dudes put out that first round. Boom, they got it in the bag. Second round, boom, they got it in the bag. Say the third round's the last round. They give up on themselves. Opponent recaptures the momentum, gets knocked out. Right, you gave up. Three things. Don't yeah. forget about that. One hundred percent. No, that that seems very very accurate. And and one thing people don't realize that I didn't even know going into it is the amount of physical exertion that you put out during a round. <laughs> like people think two minutes of doing something, oh that's nothing. Six minutes. Yeah, yeah oh, six just, minutes. Yo, like every round of my yeah. fight, I was yeah. t- exhausted. Oh, I was man. like, oh. <laughs> I look yeah. back at the video and yeah. I just I just I yeah. get I get uh, chills up my spine because yeah. it just brings me back to it. a place of yeah. of like just trauma. Yeah, to you're, be honest. And I, we, I think we briefly touched on this when we first started talking like mm-hmm. fighting is ptsd you, <laughs> right. you can use that to anchor to grow from it or you can let it crush you some people have an amateur fight and they're like, not for me i'll never do it again but i'm like hey man you survived you just got through a traumatic situation mm-hmm. good for you i think you can keep doing this and keep improving to where it won't be traumatic that way not a negative way but right. a positive way right right but it's ptsd in a lot of ways i think back to my fights man i'll be in bed and i'm like oh crap i remember how that happened right especially the losses especially the the painful moments mm-hmm. but then you're like yeah but i came back from that you yeah know? or i did something greater because of that i think if i was a younger man i'd probably t- take a lot more fights oh absolutely you know i'm, I'm 32 now mm-hmm. so it's like i would l- i would probably like to get in get into the ring a couple more times but sure. the the commitment that it takes yeah. y- you have to be all in mm-hmm. or it's just not even worth it <sighs> even the pros man like it's hard to wake up in silk sheets. <laughs> it's, it's like you have to do the work. Right? Yeah. You have to get back on it. Even if you make it to the pinnacle of being the best, you still have to wake up and get mm-hmm. back to it and remember those moments. It is a full-time commitment. People ask me why I don't fight anymore. It's because the time commitment to do that, it's not necessarily just a young man's game. Your whole life has to revolve around it. You exactly. have to be very Spartan. You have to control as much as you can of your environment. Uh, you have to make the sacrifice for it. You have to put in the work no matter what level you're at. And that's why even even before I took my fight, or probably one of the reasons why I took the fight was because I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, UFC. Nice. I'm sure you are too, right? Of course, I like martial arts. Yeah, martial yeah. arts, of course. Yeah, not not just the promotion, but just the art of mm-hmm. men who put it all on the line. Like you said, those sacrifices. Yeah. I remember it was a quote from Muhammad Ali. They said, "What's the hardest thing about fighting?" And he yeah. said, "The hardest thing about fighting is going to bed at nine o'clock alone." Yeah. Because and and, and avoiding the clubs Absolutely. and avoiding the pretty women. Absolutely. And, and I'm and I'm sure like. Did, you've had to make those types of sacrifices as a fighter oh, absolutely. as well. Absolutely, man. I used to have to cut weight, and my boys wanted me to go out. And I'm like, well, it is Friday. I don't have to train directly in the morning. I have to train at some point light. So I'll go there, and they're drinking, and they're eating. And I'm, like, cutting weight. And I'm just like, it's not, not it. it's not necessary. I've been in those positions where, like, yeah. yeah, let me go out, at least see my boys. Maybe they'll give me some motivation to keep pushing because, you know, your family, your brothers are important. Yeah. But, you know, then you're just like, got to go early. Got to call it an early night. Can't drink. Mm-hmm. That's where that sacrifice comes in. And it comes from everything, man. The, the moment you pick the wrong food and put it in your mouth, you know, things like that. And just it's this why people never understand it until they go through it. Right. You know, they always you fight for free. Like you don't understand the amount of dedication I need for even just this six minute fight, this exactly. amateur fight. They'll never understand that. But that's what separates you from other people. That's what allows you to have a deeper philosophy towards life. All right. And, and, and I'm glad that you brought that up. I mean, it separates the boys from the men. And the discipline that you are able to extract from being a fighter, that easily translates to every other area of your life. How, how have you taken, you know, your mindset and your discipline that you've acquired as a fighter and, and brought that into other dis- in other areas? I mean, just regardless, everything else is easy compared to fighting. Mm-hmm. I'll be real with you. Every, almost everything else, unless it's like soldiering, even yeah. sometimes that could be easy because there's a lot of just standing around, people say. But 
I have not stopped training. I've actually had a, about 20 years in the game, you could say, mm -hmm. and I still continue to train. I still continue to eat right. I still continue to sacrifice. I still continue to go to sleep, wow. even though I don't need to go to sleep early every night. You know, it's just that I enjoy that that routine. I enjoy the discipline that I've developed through going through this because I understand how much it magnifies the performance in my life. Right. Because if I didn't go through that, I mean, if you look around, the average person we like to talk about, overshape or has a dad bod, right? Doesn't take his life very seriously, um, has no discipline, has no correct, doesn't even know how to basic proper nutrition, you know? And he doesn't have bros he's never trained with before. A lot of people that I grew up training with are still my closest friends right. because we had pain bonded through those experiences. But I carry all of that to this day. So when I even build relationships with other men, I was like, do you even know, have you ever experienced anything like this? Because that could bring us more together. I can have more respect for you. That's another example, you mm -hmm. know? How do you motivate your friends? Like, if you do you have any friends who are out of shape or... 100%. So, like, do you... <sighs> Let's say, let's say the audience, for example, yeah. they're sitting here watching, they're at home, and they don't have much going on, and, they, and they're looking at someone like yourself, sure. and it's like, like I want to wake up early, I want, I want girls, I want to sure. be disciplined and in shape. Like, what, what should they do if their life is a, is a mess? They can do one of two things. They can live vicariously through me, because I don't force people to do anything. Mm. I don't force people to do anything. They can, I lead my life by example. I have some of the closest friends. I'm in great shape most of the time, most of the time, right? <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, I... I I do things in my life that are more adventurous than other people. I have close relationships, all that stuff. So I just lead my life on my terms. Mm -hmm. And if others want to be a part of that and they ask for my help and they're going to do something with it, I will give them the time. But I don't push people to do anything. I don't correct other people. I don't tell them how to live their lives. Let people do whatever the heck they want. Now, if they want to learn from me, I am your number one coach, your, your biggest proponent to achieve whatever you want. I will help you with any knowledge and skills and resources I have. But it's not our jobs to, to force people to do things. Mm -hmm. That's what's messed up in the world, I think. Too much force feeding. I right. remember that was the joke with CrossFitters. They would come in, like, the moment they'll tell you, I do CrossFit, right? Mm. Be like, vegan CrossFitters. I don't care if you're vegan or a CrossFitter, but <laughs> they'll just keep rubbing in my face because I don't go around telling people, oh, do you know I'm a martial artist? Is this the, yeah, martial, yeah. Is this the martial artist line at the ca ca cafeteria? Like, I don't yeah. I don't know when CrossFit became cool. Is that, like, a cool thing? <laughs> <laughs> it was, I think it died out. I think most of them have crippled now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, so so going back to, like, the, the individual who you are, like, like you said, you're um, all around, you know, in shape. You have your mindset together. Imagine if, you know, you have you and then you have a hundred of you. It becomes a, bo a brotherhood or an army. Well, no, not you individually. See, I'll be real with you. I don't want a hundred of me. Yeah, I'll that's, that's not what I mean. That's not. Mm -hmm. I don't mean a hundred of you individually. I mean a hundred of hundred men with those principles. You're, okay. You have you have loyalty. You sure. have discipline. You know what's good for you, and you and you and you um, sacrifice mm -hmm. for those things. That's called a brotherhood. Absolutely. And that's why I think that's why. Um, there's it's a shortage of them today, mm -hmm. but you tell us like about your your brotherhood. What do you value in the people who you spend the time with? I value good people. Mm -hmm. It's like you say a hundred brothers. Forget if you can do martial arts or you can do this. I value people that just want to continue tapping into their potential to be good because the way you impact the world is one you start with yourself. Mm -hmm. Two, if you have two of you that are both on a, a mission of good in the world, imagine if that multiplies and multiplies. We are living in dark times. Mm -hmm. We got Doja cats putting out Satan videos. I mean, let's be real, yeah. you know? And we have people that are lost and they don't have brothers to lift them up. And they don't have examples in society, not enough examples in society, continue doing the right things. It is a battle, I think, at the end of the day of good and evil. And it's very freaking unfortunate that we don't have enough good men out there. 